So this story is all about uh, America's favorite wing shop, Hooters. And there's a franchisee owner uh, in Destin, Florida, uh, who has a <laughs> business and they refused uh, documentation from uh, a worker. As you mentioned, Summer, this is a it's a, it's a small, seemingly inconsequential thing, right? Uh, I don't want to take this person's documents for whatever reason, but instead I want them to provide these documents that I'm that I'm familiar with, that I'm comfortable with. And unfortunately, what that found is that the uh, franchisee was discriminating against a non-U.S. citizen while checking her permission to work in the U.S. So mm -hmm. I won't go into the details of what happened in that scenario in particular, but what I will share to kind of make it interesting and fun and engaging is that uh, the I-9 has three types of documents that you can give just very, very plainly. So one document will confirm your identity, okay? So there are identity confirming documents. The other confirms your, I guess, nationality or um, eligibility to work in the US. There's, there's list A, there's list B, there's list C. So in your I-9, you have to give either a list A document or a list B and list C document because B plus C equals A uh, in the weird math of uh, of our nines. And to to Summer's point, you know, I know she's got stories to share, but I've seen business owners who will say, "Hey, uh, I need your I need your birth certificate and your passport." Well, for those HR nerds like Summer and I, we know that a passport's a list A document. Uh, and if you have a passport, you don't need the birth certificate. But there are uh, business owners, managers, hiring managers out there who aren't as aware of these two things like Summer and I uh, and our team at Jumpstart. And so they will lead people down a path that almost makes it assume that the document the employer is asking for is the one that you have to give. So, for example, let's say you want to hire a uh, you're hiring a 15 year old student at a grocery store. You might say, I need your driver's license and Social Security card. Well, uh, a, a 15 year old may not have their driver's license yet, but they might have their state ID card. You would have to accept the state ID card in lieu of the driver's license. Or they may say. Uh, I don't have a driver's license. I do have my social security uh, number, but instead of social security, I want to give you my birth certificate and my state ID uh, card. So you'd have to accept those two. What I'm trying to convey is that the employer doesn't get to choose what documents the employee gives because that is a singular reason why companies mess up with I-9 and why they get it wrong. 